Yes. Uh, I'm sorry I don't have any interesting pictures to show you. I mean, uh, insurance is uh, boring compared to the security services. Uh, when somebody thinks of uh, anti piracy insurances, one thing comes to mind today, and that's the KNR cover. Uh, let me start with one fundamental question. Is the KNR cover necessary vis-à-vis uh, -vis the rest of your marine or marine war risk uh, insurances? Let's examine that. Uh, there is a general misconception out there that uh, the uh, KNR, that the, the, the marine or marine war risks uh, covers to cover the ransom payment. This is not correct. Uh, as we, most of us know, the uh, hard machinery of war risks cover are there to uh, pay the damages in. Um, to the hull arising from a piracy incident. They are not there to cover the ransom payment. Um, some owners will come and tell you that uh, during some private discussions with their hauling machinery or war risk underwriters, they've been reassured that uh, those underwriters will exercise the discretion they have and they will pay the ransom. So this uh, is not specifically provided for in the terms of cover, but it is a discretionary cover. Would you be feeling comfortable to uh, place the risk of your cruise livelihood on the discretion of some uh, hull or war risk underwriter? I would not. The third argument that might <laughs> made some have is the swim labor clause that we almost always find in the uh, hull or war risk covers. Uh, this clause, for those who are not so familiar with uh, insurance matters, is uh, covering the expenses incurred um, in order to avert or minimize the whole, the overall exposure of underwriters. Uh, this is a valid argument. Yes, it may come into play and cover the ransom payment. But what about the loss of ransom in transit? <coughs> in other words, would the soon labor uh, clause cover the ransom money twice? I don't think so. Which brings us to the additional covers of the KNR insurance. And uh, let me read them because there are quite a few and I don't want to forget any. So as I said just now, it's not only the ransom itself, it's the loss of ransom in transit, it's the fees and expenses of underwriters advisors, these people are very expensive, the additional expenses including the negotiator's fees, equally expensive, uh, crew salaries during and sometimes after the event, the extra office costs arising from the incident, rest and uh, rehabilitation of the crew uh, even after the incident, the cost of fuel oil used uh, by the seized vessel during their capture and until she reaches uh, the rescue port as well as the relevant port use. Legal liability, uh, uh, legal liability costs arising from many awards or just judgments brought against the owners by the crew as a result of the piracy incident. Um, and even personal accident costs for death or injury of the crew during the event. Given all the above, I think we can safely conclude that uh, KNR insurance is indeed necessary from an insurance point of view. Once we have established that the KNR insurance is necessary, uh, it would be good to prepare contractually for it. And what I mean by that is uh, determine who is going to bear the cost of a KNR insurance. That can take place in the uh, charter party negotiations. Uh, the commonly used PINCO clauses for both the voyage and the time charters. Uh, leave the burden 
on the owner's shoulders. Don't be confused by the inclusion of the additional expenses. The additional expenses are covering the war risk expenses, not the KNR. So if you are owners and you want to change that, ask your chartering broker to amend the clause accordingly and include the KNR uh, course specifically. If you are the charters, leave the clause as is. Um, the cost of the KNR. At the beginning uh, of the KNR insurances, uh, the underwriters were concerned about two things only, and that was the vessel speed and free board. Uh, these are questions that are going to be uh, made today, of course, but it's not only that. Does your underwriter with information, whether you have unarmed guards or armed guards on board, it's very important. Razor wire, like we see in the pictures. Um, secure, uh, um, um, boat tag, tag escort services, um, citadel. Um, all these are factors which are going to improve the k underwriter's offer. Another very important thing about uh, uh, getting a better quotation is the limits. Know your limits. It's pointless to uh, ask for a seven million, uh, seven million uh, dollars uh, limit for a seventy-three bit uh, 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 try. Uh, Vessel, try cargo vessel uh, for transiting the, 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 the go, uh, and it's equally uh, pointless to, 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 to ensure VLCC for just one million. I mean, know your limits, it's very important. Uh, and final way to get the best possible price for a KNR insurance is depending on your contractual arrangements to establish an open cover. This is uh, an open policy which allows X number of breaches, transits, however you wish to call it, um, for a specified period, which is usually 12 months, uh, with pre-agreed terms by the underwriter. This has two advantages. One is that the bulk of transits uh, allows the underwriter to give you a better rate. And the other one is that it offers you certainty. So whatever the market rates are uh, down the line in five, six, seven months down the line, uh, you have pre-agreed terms and this will not change. Now it uh, would be good to look at the KNR contract itself. Once you have established the offer and once you have you are you are happy with it, the right I mean, uh, you should look at the contract itself, the policy as we call it. Uh, I will tell you two things to do and two things to remember. First thing to do is include, always include, a magical clause which is called waiver subrogation clause vis-a-vis -vis the marine insurances, the other marine insurances, namely the PNI, the 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 the, 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 the war risks, and uh, this basically will uh, uh, protect you. Um, uh, by, uh, by by the KNR underwriter giving up his subrogation right, rights against claims or actions you have uh, um, uh, you have against your uh, hardware machinery or war risk underwriters. That in effect means that uh, the KNR underwriter will not go after your 
had over its underwriters for recovery of, ma of the ransom or for recovery of any other uh, expenses that he has incurred. And that will also allow your marine underwriters, that is your hard war risk underwriters, to give you a very nice discount uh, when the vessel is uh, in the war risk area. Uh, the second thing uh, you should do, or I suggest you should do, is opt for a port to port cover instead of a um, of a cover which is afforded during uh, your vessel being in the high risk area. Uh, for obvious reasons, it's much better to have a vessel cover from uh, the departure port to the arrival port than to have a vessel cover only, let's say, through the Goa uh, area. Um, the two things that you have to remember. One is that uh, these are paid to be paid policies. Uh, as harsh as it uh, sounds, the owner has to pay out of his pocket and the following day he will be reimbursed by the KNR underwriter. The KNR underwriters cannot be seen to um, back up financially criminal activities and that's the reason why they cannot pay directly the pilots. Um, how the cash flow problem that this will create is resolved, uh, it is resolved through some very, very short term loans that are arranged by some Lloyd's agents under the approval and the directions of the KNR underwriter. So it's <coughs> pretty straightforward. Um, and the most important thing to remember is that uh, your KNR cover, your policy, your insurance is strictly private and confidential. It's just for you. You cannot go around publicizing that you have a KNR cover, so you're covered, so you don't care about the pirates or whether they will come aboard or not. Um, so even if you want to disclose the existence of a KNR cover to your other marine underwriters, you have to get the KNR underwriters approval in order to get the discount that I mentioned before. You want to go to your Halle Halle or, or uh, Warriors underwriters and tell them that I have a KNR insurance in order to get a very, very substantial discount. Uh, to finish, I will uh, touch upon uh, two more uh, uh, insurances which are interrelated, they are peripheral to the KNR insurance but they are equally important and this also goes to the trend uh, in the title of my speech uh, because they came lately and these are the KNR loss of hire and the ship owners legal expenses cover for carriage of armed guards aboard the vessel. Uh, for the first one, this again must not be confused with the regular loss of hire. The KNR loss of hire, uh, depending on your contractual arrangements with the charters, is very important because it can even, you can even have the charter as co assured So whether your vessel is uh, on hire or off hire, it doesn't matter. One of the two, one of the two, one of the two of you will uh, will, will receive the the hire, will receive the compensation from the underwriter. The second very important thing, and uh, contrary to the regular loss of hire, is that uh, there's a one-day deductible. As we all know, the regular loss of hire has a deductible of uh, not less than seven or even 14 days. Um, and finally, and more importantly, I think, uh, the KNI loss of hire uh, <coughs> is there even to cover the vessel's daily running costs, not just hire. So you can take out 
can a loss of hair, even if your vessel is transiting the Goa or the Indian Ocean in ballast. And you can, in that way, cover your daily running costs. Um, about the ship owner's legal expenses cover, it's pretty much what it says. Uh, it's uh, the legal costs of a uh, ship owner defending uh, a claim brought by his crew members during an incident, a piracy incident uh, involving armed guards. Maybe a crew member was caught up in the middle of fire and uh, there was a death or injury uh, resulting thereof. Uh, or even, even, and this is not unheard of, uh, the claim uh, brought by some uh, lawyer activist who is defending the rights of a Somali pirate who has been uh, uh, injured or uh, killed during a piracy attack. That's all I wanted to say. I thank you very, very much.